Hello, ballers! What's going on? It's Preacher, and I hope you're having a good Christmas. It's all coming good. If we're going to play our healer, as many people who are traditional healers have pointed out, we're going to need a new UI. My UI is pretty good for most situations, and some sort of rudimentary off-healing, do some dungeons and stuff, but in terms of doing things correctly, no. No, it's bad. I know, I know. And I love that the uh, the dedicated healers are like, he's going to fuck this up trying to heal with that UI. What a fucking idiot. So today we're going to fix our UIs and we're going to talk about a couple of things that's probably going to cause some discussion in the comments. I'm fine with that. It's not something I think is worth an argument, but I'll leave you guys to sort that out amongst yourselves. So, my traditional UI. Why is it a problem if you want to be a kind of decent healer? Well, first of all, it's off to the side. That's a big problem because our gaze and our focus, as always when we create custom UIs, should be around our character and in the central area of the screen. If my unit frames are off to the left-hand side, like they are in my standard UI, then our gaze is constantly being shifted over to a very small and minor part of the screen comparative to what we're actually dealing with in-game. This is very bad. Uh, lots of healers who do this tend to end up with the problem of being killed by things that they're stood in or not really being able to pay attention to what the raid is doing. Most often, you can actually see various debuffs and things going off. Visually, you don't need, like, a unit frame to even show you that. You'll see the effect appear on people. And if you want to be good and you want to be doing things like quality crispy grips or dropping Windrush at the appropriate time through a decision that wasn't predetermined by a raid, then you actually need to be seeing what the hell is going on and being able to foresee problems and stuff. So we want to put our vision back in the middle. So here is my new healer UI. Let's just show it straight off the way. So you've noticed, if you look at this, there it is. I'm not... This is kind of not finished, but it's good enough for what we're going to be doing in this series, in my opinion. Uh, it's not a case of, is this the best UI ever? No, I don't, I'm not bothered. You can argue about that again all day. It's not really what we're trying to achieve. What I want to show you is the general idea. So the first thing you got to notice is I have no action bars. I, I mean, I, I work on the basis that you guys should be working towards key binding. It is objectively better, but can you do just fine with clicking? Yeah, you can. You can do absolutely fine with clicking your spells. In fact, there are lots of players at the top end who still do that. Uh, if it, even in secret, they still do that. But you should be working towards key binding because you obviously, you just generally speed everything up, particularly when scenarios get a little bit out of hand. The last thing you want to be doing is clicking a player or something like that, then clicking a spell, then coming back again. So as most healer spells are actually determined by one thing, and that is your mana bar, and nothing to do with cooldowns particularly, we can actually hide our spells. Yeah, we can get rid of them. We don't need to be able to see them because our mana bar is actually going to dictate whether or not we can use them. What we will then do is use something like Tell Me When or Weak Auras in order to track the things that are on cooldown and we want to take good advantage of. So that includes DPS spells, by the way. <coughs> I want you to take note that Lava Burst is on there for me because we're going to be doing something else in a second which is really going to help that out. So I've hidden my action bars. Then all I did was create a nice big space in the middle, which is obviously going to be for the raid frames. And this has now just moved my natural eye gaze back into the center of my screen so I can control everything I need to do from the very middle. I've also created a little bit more space around my character just to make sure we can see everything. My character is now also a goblin. It was the final choice I made and there we go. So it's a very simple idea of just moving all our vision and our awareness back into the center of our screen so that we can actually be fully aware of what's going on around us and track everything without having to send our eyes wandering backwards and forwards all over the screen, which can create problems. Whether or not you know that or not, it does create problems if you're constantly having to look to your raid frames, then look back, then look to your raid frames, and you're doing all this instead of just being like a natural gaze in the middle. The next thing we did is start using our mouse over macros. So... If you're new to the game or you've not been around for a while, or you're new to healing, what's the purpose of a mouse over macro? Essentially, all you're doing is two things. One, you're cutting out a process in healing people. Now, if you're just going to run some normal five man's heroics, maybe some early mythics, it's not actually that big of a deal. It really isn't. But obviously, we're aiming to go from low to high. And at the high end, this is very much a helpful tool. You can actually get add-ons that automate this system for you. Uh, but generally speaking, you don't need to do that, in my opinion. A mouse over macro is sim simply taking the line that you would put in your macros, which is slash, slash cast, space, open parentheses, target equals mouse over, close parentheses, then a space, and then you type the name of the spell. 
Now, the reason I say this is a very quick and easy process and why you don't need an add-on for this is, generally speaking, you only need to do this with five or six spells. And you can copy-paste all the target equals mouse over stuff, so you're essentially just typing the name of the spell. On my Shaman, I only needed five. I only needed five. I needed, he uh, I needed Healing Wave, Healing Surge, Dispel, etc., etc. Those are the things I'm going to be using commonly. Riptide, so if you do have some sort of single target cooldown like... Pain Suppression, Iron Bark, something along those lines, you can add that to it as well. But I only needed five. I needed Chain Heal, and that was it. Everything else is done in a different manner, on the, at least on the Shaman, right? Everything else is done in a different manner, so I don't need to do that. You could include things like Hex if you wanted to, but that's generally a targeted system. <coughs> so the main gains we're going to make out of this, and I'll be honest with you, if you're already keybinded and stuff, this takes like a couple of dungeons to really get used to. The main advantage of this is we get an extra frame that we can get a lot of direct information from. So that can be a player. If we want to keep a tank targeted, for example, we can do that. But in Legion, more so than any other expansion, DPS is a very big deal. Okay, so we could he keep our target on the boss on various enemies. And what this allows us to do, combined with our new raid frames and our mouse over macros, is we can heal the party or the raid very, very effectively and then still keep constant information on the boss, or the ad, or the, or the trash, or whatever, which then allows us to really start to push ourselves forward in a very, very quick manner. So that can be things like interrupting, purging, or going straight back into DPS. Now, as a dis priest, this is kind of mandatory in my eyes, because you're going to be man managing things like atonement on the party while continuing to DPS a target, right? You can go around in different manners, but this is generally the easiest way. You will permanently have the enemy targeted and not having to click away uh, in order to select members of the party and lose that target in order to apply your buffs and debuffs and stuff like that. You don't ever need to do that. You'll keep your DPS target constantly focused. And that also allows us to just consistently DPS and then heal the party, go back to DPSing, consistently heal the party. If we're in a raid and we're not doing too much damage, as we get further into the fight, we can keep it on the tank. We can then get a focus frame on our other tank. We can do all sorts of cool stuff here. What all we're doing here, though, is cutting out our process while gaining more information. This is just a win-win. Now, do you need this stuff? No, you don't. No, you don't actually need this stuff. You can do perfectly fine without doing any of this. Okay, you can do perfectly fine, but you will do better long term if you're able to take in more information for less hassle and able to channel out more heals with less hassle mouse over macros also allow us to move more effectively and heal a lot of people who stop healing whenever they have to move because they're like having to move with their mouse and stuff and then they're going to click somebody and then they're going to start casting a spell etc etc whereas now we can just simply just mouse over and in an ideal world now i will say this is something i haven't done you combine the heals that you're using to mouse over so it'd be like my dispel my healing wave my healing surge chain heal etc uh, to the mouse itself so you can pick a direction and kind of just hold W while you're having to do this big movement. I can use spells like Spirit Walker's Grace, which allows me to cast on the move, and then just use my mouse literally to constantly be healing the party despite I'm moving. It's the same idea that DPSs do, which is finding the most efficient ways of moving without losing DPS. Healers seem to think that doesn't apply to them. It does. You can be a much better player if you can do that. Even if it's just instant casts, but you're not having to click someone, cast an instant cast with your keyboard, then click somebody else, do that. What we're going to do is combine all these elements together in order to effectively do that. <laughs> so, that's the main crux of things you should be thinking about with your UI. Now, if that's all you want to see and you have your own custom UI, you can kind of leave now. That's, that's the stuff I wanted to get out for the healers, is to look at that. What I am going to do now, though, is for the many, 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 many thousands of you who downloaded my UI, is to show you how I did this with my UI very quickly, uh, just to show you the general idea so you can then tinker with it yourself and make it into your own, okay? So for everyone else who just wants to look at the healing UI and do stuff like that and customize your own, go ahead. Everyone, uh, For those of you who have my UI and kind of want to play around with it, <laughs> maybe you'll learn something anyway if you have my UI, uh, let's get into that. Okay, so here we are. We are uh, in the wonderful maelstrom on our little goblin shaman here. So the first thing I'm going to do is kind of put my UI back to how it was. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to change my healer UI to Preach Legion, which is exactly what you guys have. Okay, so everything looks very, very familiar here. The only two add-ons we're actually going to change are going to be Elf UI and our grid. Okay, 
So what I want to do is create our new UI. So all we do is this, and this is going to be like maybe a bit mind blowing to some of you, but it should seem very obvious once we actually do it. So what we want to do is create a new UI. So we're going to call this Hilla for Hilla. <laughs> uh, all the pugs always say Hilla, please, Hilla, please. Uh, we're going to create a new UI. We're going to call it Hilla. Okay. Here's our new UI. And what you'll see is LUI resets to its natural state. But what we're going to say is I want to copy the absolute basics from Preach Legion. Boom. So what we've done is we don't actually have the Preach Legion UI, which is the one you'll use for most of your characters. This is actually the current profile. This is the Hilly UI. All you've done is say, can I set Hilly UI to be an exact duplicate of Preach Legion? Just take all that information and put it in here. And that's all it's done. Okay. What we're also going to do is this, enable spec profiles. Usually this option is disabled, especially if you downloaded my UI. And what you'll see is that Elemental and Enhancement use this UI. But our Resto one uses Hiller. Okay, so we can fuck around with this UI, but it, when we change back to DPS, Elemental Enhancement, it'll go straight back to the UI that you use for DPSing or tanking. When we change the healer, it's going to change to our healer UI. The advantage of having a system like this and having this pro profile, this healer profile saved to our account, is if we go and try a different healer, so you're doing a resto druid or whatever it might be, is you've already set up your healing UI. You've already done it in here. So you can literally come down here, enable spec profiles. So let's say I was a priest. I could set my shadow one to preach legion. Whereas my Dis and Holy Specs, I could change them to the Hiller profile that I've created here, and that will work. So I will show you that it just, it, I'll prove to you that you can just respec and it'll change back again. Either way, here we are. This is our standard Preach Legion UI. So let's do what we want to do. So the first thing is you see up here this option, Toggle Anchors. You can see it's at the top four bars here. We're going to click that. Now, don't be overwhelmed by the screen. All it is is showing where the boxes of information are. So you've got things like your boss button. You know, the one that extra button that pops up sometimes uh, should you have to use an item or something in your bags. Where that information comes when quests come. All this kind of stuff. Where your loot appears, alternative power bars, blah, 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 vehicles and all this kind of stuff. And the first thing we're going to do is drag our bars up to here and out of the way. That's all I did is my bars are actually over here. So you can see they are bar was bars one, two, and four. So let's start this with this. We're going to lock that. And then what I'm going to do is make these disappear. But I don't care about, I'm not trying to turn them off. In my mind, when do you mouse up to this area? It'll be different for each UI, obviously, but for me, very rarely. So all I'm going to do is go to bar one, and I'm going to make it mouse over. I'm going to go to bar two, I'm going to make it mouse over. I'm going to go to bar four and make it mouse over. My bars are still there even on my current UI, the one I've shown you in the video, but they're mouse over. Because I don't put my mouse over here, they're never in the way. It's the same as this bar we have over here for our extra stuff. They're still in existence. They're just disappeared now. That's all it is. Uh, the next thing we're going to do then is make some space in the middle. So we'll go to LUI, toggle the anchors, and in a very basic sense, I'm not trying to get everything lined up perfectly. I'm just showing you what we did, is drag all this stuff down to the bottom so it's out of the way. So target bar out of the way. Target cast bar, I'm going to keep up there because I want to track that. Our player cast bar is there. I'm going to change the size of it in a second for those of you who are curious about these things. Get out of the way, nudge bar. Thank you. And move everything else down and just make sure it's out of the way. Nice and easy. Put our focus frame over here. You can do whatever you want, but generally speaking, target, target frame down below. Generally speaking, I'm just trying to create this area in the middle. So we'll move our target cast bar up. And now we've created a nice space for our raid frames. That's all we're trying to do. So we're going to lock that. Let's get a little bit fancy because we know we don't like that. So what we're going to do is go to action bars. Uh, no, wrong one. I always get this wrong. Where are we? Unit frames. There we go. Unit frames, player frame. Now on this one, so we've got to unit frames, we've got to player frame. Here, these are the different frames associated with your player frame. So your player frame is obviously just you here. Uh, what we want to do is go down to Caspar. Yeah, come down to Caspar, and we're going to change the size of it. So, <coughs> uh, where is it? Where's Show Hide? D -d 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 uh, we want to change the width of it. Where are you? Ah. Wah. Oh, it's class bar. <laughs> you were all, tri I bet I triggered everyone there. I kicked class bar instead of cast bar. Okay, so show hide. There it is. There's our cast bar, okay? And all I want to do is shrink the width. That's it. Really that easy. 
Really that easy. I hate when you do these videos and you're like, I'm sure this is the correct way to do it and you can't see it. But there you go. Uh, so just all I did there was change that to make it a little bit smaller, a little bit neater, nothing else. And then show hide, I'll get rid of it again. Okay, so now as you can see, it's already pretty much looking like my other UI. We've got rid of the buttons, we got rid of this. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is grid. Now, grid is something you'll probably do in combat. You can jump into a battleground or something like this. The reason I like using grid <coughs> is exactly what we just did with LVY. If we come down to profiles, usually we're quite happy with our grid, our grid being over to the side. But as you can see, this screen is the same one we had for LVY. So what we're going to do is create a new one called Hiller. Yeah. Okay, that. We're going to copy the settings from Preach like you guys have. And now we have exactly the same thing as before, where in uh, enable class spec profiles for elemental enhancement, we'll use the normal one where we don't really care too much about unit frames. But when we come to resto, we have this new one called Hiller. And then we can go out to layout on the side. We can unlock it and then we get the tab here. Now you will need to be in a party and stuff for grid to work. But the reason I love grid is something I'll show you in a second. So generally speaking, we want it to be around here. But once you get into a fight, this doesn't lock while you're in combat, so you can move it around appropriately. Okay, just make sure you have show tab selected as yes and frame lock switched off. When you're happy with it, just turn off the tab and lock the frame. Simple as that. And like we did with LVI, this is now saved. So you can switch to your other healers and you can set, I want you to use this profile for this spec, the healer one, yeah? So the reason I like this one is if you go to indicators on grid... I much prefer this to the Blizzard frames because you can customize it a lot. So you can change the buff. So I actually want to be able to see Riptide in the center icon, etc., etc. Things that will be overrided by that are things like uh, enemy debuffs and stuff like that. And I don't want it on the border, actually. So you can go to center icon. I don't want Renewing Mist. I want uh, Riptide uh, as the Shamans because so I can channel things out. I don't care about Atonement buffs. And you can work through this. You can pick whatever the center pitch will be. But not only that, you can go to like the top left corners and you can actually select who's got what and it'll just appear as like a nice little icon. You can even get an extra add-on, I believe, which will change this to a graphical representation. And because we've set this as our own healer profile, if we click on frame, we can actually change the widths, make them bigger, fatter. Because you're a healer, you might want them to be nice and big, uh, much bigger than you'd have on a DPS, uh, make the heights bigger. So these are the individual squares of the classes and stuff. And once you're done with that, as long as your layout is select to lock and show tab, that's it, done. That's absolutely done. And there you go. That's your standard sort of healer UI. You can mess with it endlessly, obviously, and get it exactly as you want. But just to show you, when you switch back to enhancement, <coughs> excuse me, I'm hoping this cough will go in the next couple of days. If I switch to enhancement, brah, back to my normal UI. Yeah, and it'll do this for all your other ones. But what you've done is actually created the raid frames and the LV UI set up for a healer, and now you can just change it back. So I actually want to set it to the one I did earlier because I spent a little bit more time on it. Not a great deal, not a great deal. So if I go back here and switch back to this UI, uh, I want to say profiles, resto. I want it to be my healer one that I created first, and same with LV UI. Yeah, and you can do the same thing. So all you do is whenever you want to do a different character, you've already done all the legwork, right? You've already made it. So I want it to be healer. And it'll just adjust it ever so slightly to the more correct version. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is my Healer UI setup and how I'm going to be rocking and rolling with my beautiful little goblin. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you again. Bye-bye.